totally normal childhood. I was a completely normal kid. Um, loved to play sports, um, did very well in school, hang with my friends, and then one day when I was 15, I woke up suddenly and I was sick. Donnie Farber is now 40, but he still remembers being in the grips of his illness vividly. I was bedridden for, for weeks um, and on some occasions for, for months on end. I would sleep around the clock. Um, upwards to 22, 23 hours a day. The first episode lasted a week and a half, but was soon followed by a second one and then another. It was terrifying. Most of all, Farber says, because no one could figure out what was wrong. He underwent blood tests, spinal taps, MRIs, and sleep studies, but everything came back normal. Something very scary and something very serious was going on. Finally, a doctor in the Boston area where Farber lived came up with a diagnosis, Klein-Levin syndrome. In the media, it's often called sleeping beauty disorder. There's nothing beautiful about KLS. It's a beast. It is a beast of a disease. A beast that Jenny Grossman's family is currently facing down. Grossman's 17-year-old son Cooper has a story much like Farber's. He's an amazing, young, kind, polite, happy, healthy, energetic kid that loves to be around family. But at 15, during his freshman year, his first episode struck. Lethargy turned into almost like a coma. His pupils were extremely dilated. His skin color became very, very pale. It was impossible for him to stay awake. According to the KLS Foundation, on which both Grossman and Farber are board members, it takes an average of four years for someone to get a diagnosis of Klein-Levin. Every person that we met with basically said, there's nothing wrong, and one doctor told me to pray. That was basically what she said, that I should pray for my child. After countless doctors and tests and still no answers, a family member's Google search turned up articles on Klein-Levin, and the Grossmans, who live in Livingston, New Jersey, booked the first appointment they could get with Dr. Oren Davinsky. This is very much a medical mystery. To date, we really don't know why it afflicts one person and not another. Davinsky is a professor of neurology and an epilepsy specialist at NYU, but has seen as many as 75 patients with KLS over the course of his career. During an episode, Essentially, the sleep system is turned on and the wakefulness system is turned off. We think it's some abnormality in that ancient part of the brain, possibly an autoimmune, possibly virus, possibly neurochemical. The exact cause and mechanisms are something we're still working on. Many patients have a flu-like virus or infection before the onset of KLS, though Davinsky says that's not necessarily a cause. Doctors at Stanford are looking at whether KLS may have genetic tendencies. One reason for that? Donnie Farber, because just two years after his diagnosis, his younger sister Arielle began having episodes too. Collectively, uh, my sister and I had 40 episodes over a 10 year period. It robbed both of us of large chunks of our, our teenage years. The Farbers were the first documented siblings to have KLS, but not the only ones. But I do think genetic factors contribute. They're not the major ones that seem to be driving it. KLS affects just one or two in a million people. Because of its rarity, research and funding have lagged, though that's something Grossman and the KLS Foundation are fighting hard to change. Right now, there's no known cause or cure. However, there will be one. I know it exists, and I know it's out there. Cooper has now had six episodes over three years, missing about 70 days of high school at a time when he should be focused on academics and applying to college. Do you live in fear of when the next episode will strike? Yes. Every day is like Russian roulette. There is one silver lining of KLS, and that's that it's finite. Most patients stop having episodes by age 30. Knowing he can outgrow it is fantastic, and that's what keeps me going. But when will that be? It's a magic question. It's a mystery. Stacey Delacat, Fox 5 News.